And so you might look at that video and you might see bears fishing in the river, but you might also see six individual stories of persistence and resilience. And that is my talk. What questions can I answer for people? Yes. How many bears are in the the camp at the camp, and how many are in the park altogether? Excellent question, and I forgot to say that. So the question is, how many bears are there in Katmai National Park? 4.2 million acres. In that 4.2 million acres, I think that there are 2,200 to 2,400 bears. And they're all brown bears? <clears throat> they're all brown bears. No polar bears, no black bears. Now, fishing the Brooks River, not all of those bears will right. fish the Brooks River. The number, uh, like I said, I think in July the bear monitor counted 50 individual bears that were fishing the Brooks River in July. Yes? Do they recognize you as a person? Oh gosh, Should they befriend you or vice no, versa? No. Well, so that's a complicated question. They, I, they don't befriend you. Um, do they recognize you as a person? I don't know the answer. I, I, I don't know if they recognize individual people. I, m the way that I want to answer the question, and this is my opinion, other people would, other more knowledgeable people would say things differently. Bears expect people to behave in predictable ways. So. I suspect that, like, so I ran into a bear on the trail. I was going this way, he was going that way, I wanted to go home and eat, he wanted to go home and eat. Um, and I knew that what I needed to do was back up, and he kept coming. And I know that when the bear keeps coming, what I need to do is move off the trail. So I think he, does he recognize me? I think he recognized that I behaved in a predictable way. Um, I backed up, I let him pass, he went and did his thing, I went and did my thing. We exchanged a glance. It was mm -hmm. one of the most powerful experiences of my life. Um, but I don't think, does he recognize, would he recognize a ranger who had been there every day? I have no idea. But I think he probably does know that I am an animal, not a bear, that behaves in a predictable fashion. And if I were to do something that I wasn't supposed to do, if I was to go running at him on the trail, that would cause a problem. The other thing I want to say, important to say, bears see the world through, the world through their nose. So if they do recognize, to the extent that they do recognize things, it's through their nose. They do recognize other bears. So part of what's happening at the, at the falls is that, you know, bear 4 Adiotis will look at bear 856 and say, ah, I'm not going to, you know, that, he, I know, I, I smell that that is bear 856. I know he's more dominant than me. I know that he's not going to let me sit behind him. I'm getting out of his way before he comes closer, you know. Um, or bear 5, 4 Adiotis might say, oh, that's bear... That smells like Bear 503. I know that I know that he's too young. He's not going to come at me. He'll let me sit behind him. So they recognize each other, for sure. Okay. Other questions? Well, I was just thinking, you were talking about a bear and a human. And what if two bears are walking on the path? And... Good question. What would two bears do if they ran into each other on the path? The younger bear would move aside? I think that's probably true. The, the dominant bear would win. Yeah, the, the less dominant bear would yield. Yeah. Yes? When is, is it mating in a certain season and is birth in a certain... Oh, God, I'm so glad you asked that question. Bears mate at Katmai in late June or July. But bears don't become pregnant until they go into the den. Okay. Yeah. So the, for, the, egg will, the egg will be fertilized and it will form a hard outer shell. It becomes a blastocyst. Uh, but it will not implant in the uterus until the bear goes into the den. And at that point, if the bear is fat enough, the, the egg will implant and the bear will become pregnant. If the, if the bear doesn't have enough fat resources, the body says, yeah, I'm not going to. And I think this is fascinating. And why would nature do that? Why would, why would the body do that? It's, it makes sense if you think about the fact that mating season roughly coincides with salmon season. right? I read a book about the bears of McNeil River. And this author said, um, if a bear became pregnant in June or July, she'd be eating while she would, she'd be eating for two. She'd have to eat for two while during the, the salmon run, which is a, a, a time when she really just has to eat for herself. It puts it would push 
put extra pressure on them to be pregnant during the summer. So it's the body's way of kind of, you know. So the cubs are born after the spring. The cubs are born in the den while the mother sleeps. Oh, yeah, and it's so the mom will go into that. Remember that photo of fat 409 bead nose? So say the mom's yeah, going to the den weighing 400 or 450 pounds. That mother, while she's hibernating, will give birth to a one-pound cub about the size of a soup can. And cubs are born without fur. Um, and, I th and I'm told that when the mother gives birth, she barely wakes up. <laughs> Not my joke. One of the rangers said that. Um, and so, the, so the, the cubs are born in the den, and they stay in the den with the mother. And I like to, I, the, my, my mind just explodes when I think about the cub coming out of the den. These bears dig dens every year in the dirt. Um, dens collapse in the spring when the snows melt, so the bears dig a new den every year. The mother gives birth in the den, and my mind explodes when I think about what it must be like for the cub coming out of the den in April. You know, having lived in this den that's just big enough for, for the cub and, and its mom, and they come out and they see Alaska. I mean, imagine. Now, they nurse? They do nurse. They're sleeping moms. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. Have the waters of the park been affected by pollution at all now? And I assume if a mine goes through, they would be affected in the same way. So that's a good question. How, how is, um, and I'm going to rephrase it a little bit, how, I'm, I want to start with global warming and how is that affecting the park and how might the mine affect the park. Um, the first time somebody asked me this question about global warming, I answered this way, and I'm not sure it's the best answer, but it's one, the first thing that comes to mind is that the water in the lower river has been uh, record high for several of the last few years, um, I think because of record snow melt. And the reason that matters is because the lower river during the, uh, in July and August, that's where the moms with cubs fish. So high water in the lower river makes it harder for the moms with cubs. The other way that already water is affected by global warming is um, NACNET, or sorry, Brooks Camp has had record high salmon runs for the last two years, I think. But there are other parts of Alaska where, um, where the salmon run last year was awful where they weren't able to allow people to fish because the salmon run was lower. And I believe that the reason for that is that uh, whatever the salmon eat was in, has been found in smaller numbers because of warmer temperatures. And another important thing to know, and I want to do a talk on this, but I don't know enough about it yet, um, but the global warming, whatever is happening in our part of the world is happening way faster in Alaska, up north. So it's, what's it called, amplification. Uh, there's kind of an amplification of global warming that happens the further north you go. So places like Alaska are seeing the effects much sooner and much greater than we are. Um, so it's worth watching. Um, yes, in the blue shirt first, okay. and then you. I have two questions. Yes. Um, how does the mom emancipate that? Like? Oh. I have never seen an emancipation, and I don't think I could stand it. So um, the mother, so keep in mind that cubs are totally dependent, these cubs are totally dependent on their moms for the first two and a half years of their life. And then the mom says, yep, I, time for me to mate again. I, I need to have more babies. In order to mate, in order to be around these big male bears, this would not be good for you, my little cubs. You have to go away. And I'm told what happens is that it can be vi quite violent. Because she has to persuade them. They have, they've been together every moment, you know, really. And they have depended on their mother for safety. She's been their food source. She's been their protector. She, she's been their teacher. She has been everything to them for two and a half years. And then she has to, time to move out of the basement. Get lost. Get her own. <laughs> yeah, kick them to the curb. And I'm, and I'm told it can be quite violent um, with nipping, you know, and growling. Um, but I want to, you know, remember... Remember the picture I tried to paint of your 902 Fifi Peanut Bonsai, who, you know, teeny tiny little cub, who by the end of her, her first year on her own, she looked fat and happy, I tell you. Yes. I'll come back to you. How can we get up there? Are there tours going up there? Yes. So how do you get up there? Um, Camp Mine is a hard place to get to. Um, it requires some planning, probably. Um, Part of that has to do with, so I talked about how you get there, fly into Anchorage, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
it, it, it's a, it's a, it, there are no roads. You cannot drive to Katmai National Park. Um, there, are, there is one lodge in the park, Brooks Lodge, that has, I think, cabins for 40 people. And then there's a campground that has room for 60 people. So 100 people per night can stay in the park. To get a space in the hotel, in the lodge, in the cabins, um, you apply by lottery a year and a half in advance. To get a space in the campground, you go online to the National Park site in January if, to apply for July. It all is not lost. There are people who get in to the lodge because other people cancel. Um, and, and if you don't go in July, if you go at a different time of year, you'll, you have a lot better chance of, of finding a space in the campground. Um, you can also, oh, I said that there are 100 people who stay in the park overnight. But there are lots of people, probably in July, two or 300 people per day who come in on day trips. Um, so they fly in from King Salmon or from other places in Alaska, arriving anywhere between 8 and 11 in the morning and leaving between 3 and 5 in the afternoon. I wanted to be, I, I'm a completist. I would not have, for me to try to go for a day, I, that, I, I couldn't have done that. So for me to be able to spend six weeks in the park was... It's um, an incredible opportunity. Yes. Yes. So are you, so as a volunteer, you and other rangers, you're all staying at this lodge as well? No, we do not stay in the lodge. Thank you for asking that question. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, one of the things I wanted to, one of the things I want to do in this talk is to help you think about volunteering for the national parks. What I did was I went to Bush, Alaska for six weeks. I shipped in my food. I lived in park service housing. Uh, if you're a volunteer, the park service gives you housing. You provide transportation and your own food. Um, you also get a uniform and a hat. Um, <laughs> and you get to live here in Brooks Camp. Um, and they have different kinds of housing. Some people live in cabins. Some people live in a, a kind of a bunkhouse. Um, uh, you might have running water in your building, or you might go to the building next door for running water. But um, So they provide housing, and you, you get that. That's one kind of experience, an extended period of time in a location. Um, I've also done, I've volunteered for Yosemite, um, captioning videos from my home. Uh, lots of people volunteer, like if you go to a national park, if you go to spend five days at Yellowstone, think about spending a morning as a volunteer. Um, national parks are a great place to volunteer, and I believe that they really rely and value their volunteers. So, um, and there's all kinds of different experiences that you can have. So please think about volunteering for your national parks, especially during National Park Week. <laughs> yes. Me? Uh, no, the, the, and then you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, you. Um, I was wondering if the names you were giving for the uh, fishing spots, like jacuzzi or lip, were those your own personal names, or were those the names that all the rangers used for? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Those are not my personal names. And if you get the, if you go online and get the Bears of Brooks Falls book, there's a map that shows, you know, here's the jacuzzi, here's the far pool, here's the, here's uh, 89 Backpacks Rock. Um, there's one location called the Office because that's where Bear 480 Otis likes to fish. Um, Bear 480 Otis, I'm not making this up. He, remember, he's the oldest male. He comes in every day at the same time. He comes in, punches the clock, <laughs> and he goes sit, sits in the office. And he'll sit there honestly for 12 hours at a time. And he'll sit and he won't move. And, and he doesn't create drama. And he's not fighting with his co workers. And he's not. <laughs> and he just gets fat. And so that, that is called the office. Largely, I think, because of Bear 480 Otis. But they are, so these names are actually a really helpful way of kind of tracking the bears and tracking the behaviors and talking with other people about the bears. There's kind of a common language. Yes. Me? Yes, in the blue. Okay. <laughs> yes. um, where do they sleep during the six months that they're not hibernating is one part. And because they're having to put all this weight on, does their bowels work the same? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that question. So I, I want to reframe your first question. Where do, I want to say, where do they sleep during the day? Because what they do during the day is they eat and they sleep, they eat and they sleep. And everybody would always say, well, where do they, where do they go sleep during the day? 
And the answer is wherever they want to. Um, and sometimes they'll sleep in the river. Sometimes they won't move. Sometimes they will literally sleep where they're fishing. Because if you're trying to get fat, it's all about diet and exercise. <laughs> so you're going to eat as much as you can and move as little as possible. <laughs> um, when it comes time to hibernate, these bears, I think I meant, these, these bears dig new dens every year. And most of them, I think many of them, will dig dens in, at, in Dumpling Mountain. So that mountain that we saw the picture of, they'll go up that mountain and they'll dig dens. Um, and there's a fascinating video online. Uh, if you Google Ranger Mike Bear Den, Cat Mike, Ranger Mike goes into a bear den. Not well, a bear is in there. <laughs> but he goes in and you can see what it looks like. And he talks about what it looks like and what it smells like. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ew, but still. What was the other part of your question? Uh, if eating, oh! They're bowels. Like, yeah. <laughs> bowels. Arthritis. Here's the thing. Bears, these bears gain 50% of their body weight over the course of four or five months. They do not get arthritis. They do not get thrown out. Well, that's not true. Or Otis has arthritis. But they don't have knee problems. They, you know, if, if I gained 50% of my body weight, yeah, we'd have some health problems. The other thing is, so when you're hibernating, has anybody ever, anybody ever been uh, in the hospital or flat on their back for a couple of weeks at a time? Yeah. And you know how you lose your the muscle, oh. muscle tone. Mm -hmm. These bears don't lose muscle tone while they're hibernating. They don't develop heart disease associated with weight gain. NASA is studying bears. <laughs> I'm not making that up. NASA, or bear hormone. NASA studies bears and hibernation because to learn things that might be useful in terms of going to outer space. They are fascinating animals. Ranger Susan. Oh, thank you. Um, have you ever noticed what happens when a bear cub comes across, that has been emancipated comes across? Mm. Mom again. Like you oh. pretend they don't know each other. <laughs> <laughs> or worse. Or worse. Wow. Um, so sometimes, so remember the, we talked about uh, emancipation and what a traumatic experience that must be and how hard it must be and how hard the mother ha must have to work, right, to, to persuade the cub, you know, no more, right? Um, so there are, I, will, I believe, um, different pe so different people would, would answer this question differently, but I, here's what I believe. I believe that bears recognize their offspring. Um, I do not think that in most cases it is a joyous reunion. Um, and in fact, Bear 435 Holly, uh, so a lot of the bears who fish here are related. Bear 435 Holly fishes here. Her son, 89 Backpack, fishes here. Her daughter, Bear 719, fishes here. 503 Cub Adult, her adopted son, fishes here. Um, we have seen Bear 435 Holly charge 89 Backpack. Um, I believe that I have seen 435 Holly charge 719. And I think that that might just be a reminder, you know, keep away. Keep away. Now, the summer that I was there, Bear 409 was fishing the lip, and there were two young sub-adults fishing below. Uh, that were not, I don't have a firm ID on those subadults, but many people thought that those were 409's recently emancipated uh, offspring. Um, and she let them fish below her. Um, so, but I, I, do they recognize each other? I believe yes. I, you know, their sense of smell is so powerful, I don't know how they wouldn't recognize each other. Yeah. And I think that the distance thing makes sense. To me, the distance thing makes a lot of sense, like, I can see why 435 would not want 89 backpack a male hanging around her because, like, you don't want that breeding to happen. But I think it's also really interesting that she doesn't want her female offspring hanging around each other. I am very curious to see what happens between 435 Holly and 503, her adopted male son. Oh, that's <laughs> right? I think that'll be really interesting to watch. Are you going back? I am going back for three weeks in July. Yes. I, I'm trying to count two and a half years to emancipation, mm -hmm. which makes it sound like they're emancipated at the end of the season. They're Is that right? At, at Cat My, they're emancipated early in the season. So the, the cub will be born in the den, go back into the den with its mother once, go back into the den with its mother a second time, and then at the beginning of that third year, and, 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 what, and, and we... And a, I don't want to say a lot. Um, it is the case that 435, we have seen 435 
with 719 and 503 before she emancipated them. And we saw them in camp. We saw 128 Grazer and her cubs in camp before she emancipated them. Because they emancipated sometime during the early... Yeah, before, fall. before the salmon run. Yeah, before mating season and before the salmon run. Can I do it again? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, dominance, you are mm. interpreting from positioning in the pecking order of the feeding, mm -hmm. right? Dominance also extend to mating? So the thing about dominance is if you're a dominant bear, theoretically you get first dibs on the mate of your choice. Um, part of the reasons... Uh, and this is, I'm going to put a big qualifier here. This is how I would describe it, right? Part of the reasons that male, male bears fight are, for dominance are they want to have good fishing spots and they want to have access to good mates. And if you're a more dominant bear, theoretically, you have, it's easier for you to get the best fishing spots and theoretically, it's easier for you to get the best mates. I say theoretically because of this. And, and I, I, this is just me. I'm just speaking for me. I have seen, so bear courting is fascinating. Bears are so used to being separate that when bears want to mate, what happens is that they follow each other around. Usually the male bear follows the female around until she's comfortable, right? It's like, I've got to, you know, I'm used to being by myself. You're going to have to persuade me that I want to spend time with you. And I, I think that there are some female bears who get more comfortable with, a smaller male bear like 151 Walker, it takes them longer to get used to being around 856, the most <laughs> dominant male. Um, and they might be more comfortable quicker being around bear 151 Walker. I don't know enough about that to be definitive, but, um, but dominance fits into mating, and in a, I think it's probably in a pretty complicated way. Yes. Just along with what you said about the mom and then her daughter, she didn't want the daughter near her. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, does she view her as, I wonder if she views mm. her as competition. Competition, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. I don't know. Good question. Yes. What is the gestation period for bears? So a bear will, um, so these bears go into the den in, say, October, November. Um, I think they become pregnant when they go into the den. They give birth in January or February, and they come out of the den, let's say, in April. Um, it's, a short it's a short gestation period. It is very small. Very small. It's one of the biggest differences in size between a mother and a child. They also, I think, have one of the lowest reproduction rates because, because bears will, these bears will have a litter of one or two, maybe three, maybe four, um, but again, the cub mortality rate is 50 to 60 percent. And, and so they'll invest three years in, in raising their offspring. Then they take a year off, that's a mating year, and then the next year they'll, they'll maybe have more cubs. So it's a very low reproduction rate. So one of the things I hope you all get out of this is that like, it's really, really hard being a bear. And bears do not need our help making things more difficult for them. It's just on their own. It's hard. Alyssa. How can they eat a fish in 15 seconds? So how can they eat a fish? I didn't say she ate a fish in 15 okay. seconds. I said she was catching a fish in 15 seconds. And I believe that that's, in fact, true. Um, one of the things that we did at Katmai when you volunteer is you, they, they do a salmon count at the falls um, every hour and half hour. So they have a ranger or a volunteer count the number of salmon who are going over the falls every in, in a minute. And it was not surprising to find 240, 250, 300 salmon per minute going over the falls. And so a, bear, a, a talented fisher like Bear 409 can, in fact, stand on the lip and catch a fish every 15 seconds. And at the beginning of the season, she would eat that whole fish. Each fi these fish have 4,500 calories. And at the beginning of the season, when they're really hungry, she would consume an entire fish. Would she eat the whole thing? She would eat the whole thing. And then she wouldn't be fishing as fast. But when she was catching 15 fish per second, it was probably in July. So it's kind of later in the season. And what happens then is that they start doing something called high grading. And that's when they will catch the fish. They will, uh, their goal is to get fat. So if I want to get fat, I'm going to have chocolate milkshakes and chocolate cake <laughs> and potato chips and dip. Um, so, when, so what they will do is they'll high grade and they'll eat the, the fattiest parts of the fish, the brain, the roe, and the skin, and they'll let the, the, rather than wasting stomach space on 
the rest of the fish, the fish that we like, yeah. <laughs> they'll let that float downstream. So she would catch a fish, she'd bite off the head, eat the roe and the skin, and just let the rest of it. Which is why, and you couldn't see the video, but when you stand at the falls platform, you see the big male bears lined up at the front. You'll see smaller bears behind them. You'll look down the river, you'll look down that mile and a half of river, and you'll see big bears, medium bears, moms and cubs, You'll see eagles, you'll see gulls, and none of that fish goes to waste. Because bead no a bear like bead nose or four idiotas, they're gonna, 503 cub adult, they're gonna take the fat parts, the, the non-fatty parts will float down to the sub-adults who aren't very good fishers, but they're sitting there catching the scraps. And then the moms and the cubs, and then the eagles will swoop in, and what the eagles don't take, the gulls will, will take. So it's very efficient. Yes. My question is about the numbers. I, I mm. wonder if I missed something. That uh, cub 89 has a smaller number than his mother, who's 400. Right. So the, I, you didn't miss anything. I didn't go in. So the question is about the numbers. How are the numbers organized? All right. Um, the numbers have nothing to do with hierarchy, and they don't uh, visibly, anyway, have anything to do with family tree. Order. They, the, they do connect to chronological order. So all of the bears who, I, who were ID'd in a given year, um, so all of the 800 bears got their, their numbers in the same year. Oh. All of the 900 bears, like the bear, like bear uh, 902, Fifi Peanut Bonsai, uh -huh. um, any bear who was ID'd last year will have a number in the 900s. And it's important to say that uh, numbers are assigned not only to newly emancipated subadults, um, but if there's a, a, an adult bear who shows up at the river for the first time, if there's an adult bear who showed up for the first time last year, who had never been seen, who had never before. Be, been seen before, um, that bear would get a 900 number. Okay. Yeah. But I, I still can't figure out why number 83 has a. Yeah, it just it, so the number Wrong has number. to yeah it just has to do with the way that, that the numbers were assigned. Oh, okay. Yeah, or the year that the number was assigned. The year. Yeah, and the bear book is helpful. And the advice that what I I would give is like don't get hung up on <laughs> the numbers or the names some because some only have numbers. And some only names. have numbers. Some have numbers and names. Some some don't have numbers at all. Um, and like I kind of feel like knowing the numbers is helpful if you want to stand in a room and talk to people about yeah. bears. Um, and then you sort of the, get the age, too, because of the You year. might, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, you can also really, 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 and most of us enjoy watching the bears, sure. even without knowing who you we're watching. Them. It doesn't doesn't matter who right. it is. It's fascinating. Right. Yeah. Can I get that Bears of Brooks River online? That is a link to the Bears of Brooks okay. River. Yes. I want, but I want to buy it. Yeah. Oh, so you, it's not available for purchase. It is a free download, okay. and you might be able to find, if you know somebody who has a printer, you could have them print it for you. Um, places like Staples might or might not print it due to copyright. Um, could you pick something like that up on your Nook or your Kindle? It is, yes. It's available on iBook, uh, okay. Apple That's Books, yeah. And if you make a note on the sign-up sheet, which is over here, um, make a note on the sign-up sheet next to your name, and I'll send you a link to it. Okay. Yes. So what are you doing next in your work with the bears? So I am going back to Katmai this summer, only for three weeks. That's I only last year I used two two years of accumulated vacation time. <laughs> this year I only have one year Smith of accumulated. Can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only have one year, and so I'm going to go back in July, which is their busy season. Um, I hope that, I, I, and I think I'll be doing the same thing, standing around and talking to people about bears, because what else would I want to do? Um, I hope I'll do it better, um, because last year was my first year. Um, I would love, and then after that, I don't know. I mean, I, I seriously do want to be a park, you know, park ranger. I, I love my job, but I'm going to retire at some point, and this might be a great thing to do in retirement. I would love either in retirement or before to go to, uh, I would love to go to McNeil and see the bears at McNeil. I also dream of volunteering at other parks. Um, I would love to volunteer at Big Bend National Park, um, maybe at Acadia. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love some of the other kinds of volunteering that I've done. I loved captioning videos for Yosemite. I learned so much from captioning those videos. And I will keep watching the bears and keep working as a camera. Great.
Other questions? And I, you guys, I know it's kind of late, so if you need to leave, you should totally leave. Um, yes? I just want, have you tried setting the bears up? in Northampton and Florence, the black bear. <laughs> uh, what a great question. I have not tried that. Um, that's, that would be really fascinating, and I should try that. Yeah. Um, yes. Are the bears protected? The bears are... in Alaska, can you go to a restaurant and eat beer? Or not? I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that there is no hunting in the national... I know. Yeah, yeah. Park now, yeah. I mean, Alaska's a big place. Yeah, I think that there is hunting in other parts of Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see moose on a menu. You know, yes. You can see a lot of food. Uh, yeah, animals that's right. like that on menus in Alaska. Yes. I don't know if you can see bear. I don't know. I don't know. We didn't, we didn't get to eat at restaurants. <laughs> 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 there were no restaurants. Yes. Uh, can bears develop from eating all that food? Could they develop, like, diabetes or like it? I love that question. I don't think that bears can get diabetes. Um, at the risk of being gross... Should I be gross? Yes. yes. I'm looking at, okay. So I, I, and I'm saying this because I know that, that Leslie is a bear watcher. I have seen bear 480 Otis eat 39 fish at a time and then turn around and get sick and then start eating again. <laughs> I've also seen bear 480 Otis not infrequently get the hiccups. So I don't know a lot about bear digestive system. Another cool thing about bears, though, is that they eat, they don't, like, pull the fish off the salmon. They're eating the bones. Um, so they're, they're